Hi, I'm Doug, your tech support representative here at Atlantic British, and in this video we want to introduce you to the belt replacement kit that's part of our repair and maintenance academy for the LR3. This is the V8 4.4. Now, when you go on our website, you can access this sheet, which you can even download and make copies of. You'll see a recommendation of every 105,000 miles for the belt change kit. Belt change kit part number is PQR500. 330 SKA and what you're going to receive in that kit is both the primary belt and the secondary belt for the serpentines. Now over a period of time these belts can dry out, dry crack and lose their ability to grab onto a pulley as well as they can when they're new. Um, all this can affect performance. This can also create a breakdown should the belt decide to snap or lose a chunk out of the belt. So again, it's something you do is considered regular maintenance. It's a wearable item and you definitely want to do them every 105,000 miles. So hang in, we're going to show you how to install these belts on your vehicle. Okay, so you've seen the kit, the two belts, and we're going to give you an idea of how to install these belts yourself. It's really not that bad a job. This is a, uh, an 06 LR3, but this application will work from 06 to 09 with the 4.4 V8. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the intake and the air filter cover that gets this muffler, they basically call it, or amplifier, out of the way so that we can access and remove the upper shroud. This consists of nothing more than about seven screws, Phillips. You want an extension on there only because this one on the inside will difficult to get at without we got our seven screws out we're going to disconnect the connector for the mass airflow sensor squeeze down on the tab and it may not come out right away you can take your flat blade screwdriver just insert and twist that'll pop right off and we'll let that drop out of the way We'll undo this clamp for the intake hose. And we should be able to lift this right up and out. And we'll move that right out of the way. Now some of you may find that the wire for the mass airflow sensor would be taped to this white tab right here. So you want to make sure that you've released that before you take this cover off. All right. Next, we're going to get to the shroud. Now, quickly, just you've got the air filter cover off. Take a quick peek, see what kind of condition your air filter's in. This one is moderately worn, but we'll get a little bit more mileage out of it. But should it be really dirty, now's a good time to get it changed over. So, on the shroud, you have kind of hard to describe, but they're like a plastic clamp or clip built into the top half that clips into the bottom half. So we're going to pop this hose out, and we'll show you once I get it off what they look like, but essentially what you need to do is you'll put your finger under there and you'll feel like a half circle tab that you're going to push in with your finger and lift up on the shroud. Now you have two of them on the driver's side, so you actually even heard that one click. Here's one. There's two. And you can see here what you have is this piece right here. You need to get your finger in there to be able to push that in so it'll lay flat. So you can pull it up through the slots in the bottom half of the shroud. So now we're going to take the fan off. The first thing we need to do is slide this connector out. I need to disconnect this. And this is the electrical, electrical control for your cooling fan. Move that out of the way. Now there's several different ways to get the fan itself off. There's a 36 millimeter nut on the fan clutch that attaches to the water pump shaft. And uh, there are special tools available from Land Rover where one will grab the two bolts on the pulley and the other will grab the nut and then you can just simply break it loose. I've got several different ways of doing it. Depending on what tools you have, you can take a 36 millimeter wrench. These can be gotten through a lot of the tool, local tool dealers. Place that there. You can put a uh, small pry bar 
between the bolt of the water pump and the nut squeeze together all right so we've cracked it loose and I found like on some of these that they've been in there for a while you can take a long punch and wrap on that nut a few times and that'll break up some of the rust or corrosion that's in there that's holding everything together now as I said you can put that you can put the small pry bar down between the nut and one of the bolts for the water pump and pop that loose now you notice this is left hand thread so essentially you're going to turn that nut where normally you would be turning it counterclockwise you need to turn it clockwise to back it out and we'll back the fan out and once you break them loose they come off pretty easy make sure you hold on to your wire try not to grab anything on the way out so now your fan is out now at this point you have easy access this is the tensioner for the front belt which drives the water pump and as you can see it's right out there in the open it's easy access so we're going to take that out and what you're going to need is a half inch drive either a breaker bar or a ratchet with a long extension okay so the the half inch drive attaches into a squared out hole on the tensioner itself you're going to release the tension off the belt and as I say now this is a 24 inch bar and I still have to put some weight into it to get it to move that tension is quite tight so if you're thinking you're going to do it with a short bar you're much easier get yourself a nice long bar to give yourself the leverage to back this off slip the belt off the top of the water pump pulley back off on your tension and the belt should just fit between the tensioner Let me take that off. Now at this point, I may make a recommendation if you can get yourself a large piece of cardboard or something to slide down to put up against the front of the radiator. Because you're going to be taking some of these bolts out with a ratchet or maybe even an air ratchet and you don't want to slip and come back up and hit the radiator. Should you punch a hole in there, now you've just made this a very extensive and expensive job. So, put yourself, put some cardboard or something over this, a uh, blanket to drape over the front, but it's just something to protect the front of the radiator. Alright, so the next step is we need to get into this back belt, which is going to require a little bit more work. There is a bracket here that needs to be removed. It's the hub for this idler pulley right here. And that's essentially going to be removed so that you can get to the bolts to remove the hub. And the tensioner for that belt is over on this side. And it's going to be the same application as you had with the front, only with a 3 8 drive, which has a squared out hole right on the tensioner here. And you're going to use a 3 8 drive breaker bar to be able to relieve the tension off of that. So first we're going to take this pulley off, and then we'll remove the belt. So now you'll see before you can remove the belt, that the belt rides in behind this mounting bracket. For the idler hub for the uh, drive the outer drive belt and what you'll have is three bolts here which you can access with a short extension you can see they even put cutouts in the hub so you can access the bolts and then you have another bolt right here and one just below it now take the one below it out first because that also holds in a bracket for this coolant pipe which you'll need to be able to move up and out of the way when you go to remove the upper bolt so to release that we're going to take these two bolts out these three bolts out and then we're going to remove this bracket assembly right out of the way so we remove the bracket this gives you an idea what it looks like out of the vehicle you have the two top bolts actually there's a short bolt that holds that hose in place and then your three bolts that we showed you behind the hub so we're going to place this out of the way this is where the air filter becomes a nice easy parts tray holds everything for you so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the tensioner for the front belt so that we have easier access to the back belt. And something else I want to recommend before you even take it apart is take a good look at the routing and the way that belt back belt runs. If you need to make a drawing or you want to take pictures with your cell phone, have some kind of reference set up so that when you go to put the new belt on, you know which way it needs to be routed through. So for the bottom pulley, we're going to put a 13 millimeter socket and a half inch drive ratchet to break it loose. And 
This is one of those steps where you really, you don't have to do this part. You don't need to take it out if you really don't want to, but this just makes it easier than instead of trying to snake the belt up between that pulley for the idler in the back and the tensioner for the front. Just makes it much easier for the two seconds it takes to do the job. All right, so we've taken the tensioner out. You'll notice you got a lot of rust buildup on the back side of this pulley, along with the fact that when you spin it, you can hear it, it's a little dry. And we've even got a little bit of side to side play. Now's a good time to be replacing that tensioner, other than waiting for it to come apart while you're going down the road on vacation or at a very other inopportune time. So, again, when the belts are off, you're going to check actually every one of these pulleys to see if everything is spinning should have a little bit of tension should feel a little bit tight no dryness no grinding no play any of that any of those idler pulleys have that you need to get them changed over now now's the best time so we're going to put this to the side and again we're going to look over the routing of the belt so that we're very familiar with how it's going to go back on your water pump is up top this belt is going to go up and over the top of the water pump. This is your, actually, this is your AC compressor. You'll notice that there's no clutch on the front of it. This is what they call a uh, constant rotation, and then the pressure is regulated, actually, by a module. That runs down to your power steering pump, over to the lower damper, through the tensioner, over to an idler pulley, and down to the alternator, and then the cycle all over again. So to remove that belt, we're going to put a 3 8 inch breaker bar with a short extension to get it out past these hoses. Release the tension, and you're going to slide the belt off this pulley right here. That will relieve all the tension off the alternator, and then we can remove the belt fully. Okay, so we've shown you how to access and remove the belt. Once the belt is out, check your pulleys. Put your new belt back in. As I said, you know, you basically make a reference so that you know which, how the routing goes and then simply reassemble it, just the opposite of how we've taken this apart. It's relatively easy, it's just all bolt back on. We're gonna re-bolt the bracket, we're gonna put your tensioner on, your front belt, the shroud goes right back into place, pops in, and you're set and ready to go. So when you're ready to change the belts over on your 4.4 AJ engine LR3, and as I say, this covers from 05 all the way up to 09, give our knowledgeable salesman a call at 1-800-533 2210. Thanks for watching.